Ever since Bobby walked into the house, he and Clyde had been watching Desert Storm for the past 30 minutes. The team would occasionally make small talk, asking Clyde like things like, how's life doing, how is school hanging, what he and Lincoln were up to these days, particularly if the loud was doing okay since they hadn't talked in a while, and if they had any plans for the weekend, Clyde's answer was as best as he could. Not being able to say how things were going on in his end, school was dull as ever, not counting the whole issue with Lincoln's fears, but he was just getting to that subject. Because of that, my friends and some of Lincoln's sisters put together this operation where he can maintain little contact with them as possible, so at least he doesn't freak out in class or anything. So far it worked, although we had a few hiccups at first. Recently Lynn came up to Lincoln wearing clothes I didn't even think Lincoln knew she had. If I'm right, it's probably what got him to have a session with Dr. Lopez and Lynn could be there with him. However, Clyde pierced his lips. Lincoln's a bit in what the word. He tapped his chin. Confused, angry, undecided. Sounds like the little out has all the above, Bobby commented. Yeah, yeah. He's starting to get mad at his sisters for what they did, but he feels that he can't tell them without things of repeating themselves. Now, I doubt they beat him up again, since they generally regretted that in the first place. But this is something Lincoln needs to see for himself, so maybe he could trust them again. Oh, I get it. It's like that from the episode with From Arg, where Hunter needs to show this guy who he doesn't believe in ghosts that they were real. Clyde nodded. Exact. He paused when a certain word came up from the sentence caught his attention. You watch Arg? The Hispanic teen nodded. Yep, don't tell Ronnie Ann, though. She thinks it's super cheesy. Clyde scoffed. She thinks everything of the nerd is full of cheese. Bobby raised an eyebrow. But that's... His eyes widened a bit. Oh, I get it. He started to laugh out loud, with Clyde following suit seconds later. However, the younger boy soon cut his chortle short, thinking the noise might disturb the sleeping loud. If there was ever a time to admit... Clyde will be honest with himself. Bobby was really a nice guy when you get to know him. A little dense at times, but it was hard to see why Lincoln saw him as an older brother. They did only have been talking for almost an hour, and Clyde already found himself liking the teen. And because of that positive, outgoing persona, it wasn't hard to imagine why Lori fell for a guy like him. Lori, Clyde sighed in awkwardly as the frown began to form. The young lad had a long since come to the heartbreaking conclusion that Lori wasn't as sweet or angelic as he once thought. Seeing Lincoln state he says was bedridden was enough proof. Lincoln's words echoed in his brain like a music player stuck on repeat, and Clyde couldn't help but feel the guilt that filled the pit of his stomach. For the longest time he saw Bobby as nothing but a competition for the self-proclaimed love of his life. Trying to do his best to win Lori's affection and even hoping she might one day dump the Santiago for him. However, none of Clyde's attempts seemed to work, as evidence that Lori would be disgusted by his behavior or outright ignore him. Come to think of it, Clyde never found out what she did with all the gifts he sent her. And here he was now, following Lincoln's advice to actually get to know his rival. And boy, did Clyde felt a sense of joy and depression. Many times Lincoln had tried to dissuade Clyde from attempting to win over his sister, but this was usually met with Clyde blowing him off for thinking Lori was just playing hard to get, and he was learning, however, the McBride child never had the chance. How he hoped to against, compete against a textbook, nice guy several years in his senior, like Bobby, while Clyde was just scrawny nerd with several anxiety problems? And I made a detail a replica of him getting burned alive by a volcano. Clyde gasped to himself. Bobby raised an eyebrow in response to the younger boy's sudden shock. You okay, Clyde Stale? The African American shook his head. Yeah, just thinking about he wrapped his ditches together. Some stuff. It's just one of those things where it's hard to talk about or something too privy. The teen's face became crestfallen as he stared blankly at the TV. I used to get that whenever I needed to talk to Lori about something important, or when she needed my opinion on a dress or gift she gave me. But I lost track of, you were perfect for her.
Clyde uttered softly. Huh? You and Lori, the nerdy kid glanced sideways at Bobby. You guys are perfect for each other. You're such a nice guy, and Lori's such an angel. I tried to ruin it by taking Lori for myself. Uh, Bobby started, but Clyde continued. I'm sorry, Bobby. The boy started to form tears in his eyes, and his voice started to break. I treated you unfairly, in the same name something that wasn't meant to be. I was so blinded for my love for Lori that I didn't even see what a great man she had in her life. I didn't even take Lincoln's advice when I should have stopped so many times instead of suffering a heartbreak after heartbreak. Bobby blinked a few times and his mind probed into what Clyde was getting at. After a few moments of silence, a light smirk spread across the teen's mouth and his body shook in an attempt to suppress his giggles. Just promise me one thing, Clyde, Clyde spoke as he looked up to Bobby. Please take good care of... He was cut by a short howl of laughter, followed by a heavy shift on his weight on the couch. As Bobby fell to his side, Clyde became eye-wide at the display, soon forming up a deep frown to his obvious mockery of his feelings. Why are you laughing? I'm trying to share something personal with you. It's not that. Bobby continued to chuckle as his fest as he sat straight. I already knew you had a thing for Lori. Clyde's pupils shrank as his thought process grinded to a halt. The only thing he could manage was bewildering. Huh? I mean, it was pretty obvious, dude. Bobby pointed out with a smile. Plus, she kept complaining about all the nice things you kept giving her and staining her shoes with your nosebleeds. But I didn't do anything of that because I found it cute. Plus, I was the same way when I was your age. Really? With who? Bobby scratched his chin and hummed. Does Miss Metarantino is still a substitute work at your school? M Miss DeMartorino? The boy suddenly sputtered out, his mind going into an override drive, just puncturing the Hispanic beauty to the grace of, of the classroom field court. Her perfect figure, her sweet voice, her pretty smile... Those eyes could get lost in error, error, system malfunction. Clyde spoke in a fox robot tone as drips of blood started to come out of his nose. His eyes became dull as each one took and looked in opposite directions. Bobby's face fell a bit. You okay, bro? It does not compute, does not compute. Clyde uttered, taking his time to make the robot movements to match his voice. Bobby gently grabbed the lad and shook him. Clyde, you're starting to scare me, man. Bro, what? Clyde shook his head as he regained his focus. What happened? You started to freak out after I said the teen stopped himself before he uttered the teacher's name, not wanting to risk Clyde going nuts again. Miss D. Then, Clyde felt another spat attack coming from the stream of blood, started to drip out of his nose again. Thankfully, it was much more manageable than before, and as the nerdy kid reached over to the tabletop, grabbed the tissue box. Stuffing a wad in each nostril. I could see why she was just so, so... His mind had a lot of words to describe her, and it felt wrong just to settle one. Hot? Bobby replied bluntly with a smirk. Clyde's cheeks formed a blue red hue. He took a deep breath. Was it tugging the shirt collar to let out a little scream? Steam. I, I was going to say goddess, but that works. Bobby chuckled again. I was head over heels for her when I practically followed her almost everywhere she went. You may say it was a little creepy too. He leaned on the arm of his couch. But after a while, I learned that it wouldn't be even possible. Because you know, she's like 20 or so years older. Much a big no-no. And not long after, Lori started pranks on me for attention. Clyde raised an eyebrow. That sounds like a lot of what Ronnie Ann did to Lincoln. Bobby gave a shrug. It probably was does that since I told her how me and Lori got together. He frowned a bit, though that's in the past now. The 11-year-old widened his eyes a bit. So you guys are exes? Yeah, Bobby folded his arms. I have been ever since the little loud first ended up in the hospital. He stared at the entertainment box for a few seconds, unable to find any sort of enjoyment from the show currently on air before he gave a heavy sigh. I just didn't even expect this to happen. I just waited a few hours since she hadn't texted me back and me and Lori tend to go non-stop with text messaging, to the point of Mama threatened to put a limit on my phone. I kind of cut it real close. He held up two fingers with a small gap between the empathists. 
but we usually make it work it out. Even though I knew about the whole sister protocol thing from what she told me the before day before everything went bad. Bobby then sank a bin in his seat and stared at the ceiling. Then the next thing I know, I get a couple long messages from her telling me that she and the other sisters beat up Lincoln and he's in the hospital. I was thinking at first that this had to be a joke. Even about calling her to make sure, but the teen fiddled with his thumbs. You know those moments where you really just get somebody's words in a text? I've had a hunch she wasn't lying. I was even proven right when I tried to call her and it said my number was blocked. So, Clyde spoke slowly as he tried to piece it all together. Does that mean she broke up with you or... Bobby gave an indifferent hum. Was it struggling his shoulders a little? I guess, I mean... I probably would have done the same after I saw how banged up Lincoln was. Maybe she did it because she was being punished or... His brows curled into as Bobby spoke somberly. Maybe she thought she wasn't good enough for me. Clyde only nodded in understanding. From what he did know so far about relationships to some chick flicks, his dad's watch. It wasn't uncommon for one partner to leave, leave for the never one out of shame or some other conception of self-doubt. If it were the other circumstances, the boy might have been rejoicing at the news of the breakup and immediately set off to work on making Lori his. However, given Bobby's current mood, especially after this whole situation thrust up upon him and absolutely wreck a complete, pure, perfect relationship, Clyde felt bad for the poor teen. Granted, no one expected a close friend to have a severe family problem. Occasionally, Lincoln would complain about his sister's habits, but it never got this bad. And from Clyde's understanding, it was more personal for the Santiago's on two fronts. Bobby having his ex-girlfriend leave him out of guilt, Ronnie Ann being forced to come out of her comfort zone and be more protective than her usual secret boyfriend due to newfounded anxiety problems. On top of that, everyone else can only wonder if Lincoln would ever return to his normal, goofy self. Unfortunately, he seemed to have headed for a life, being distant from all of his siblings bearing one. Do you ever miss her? The young lad asked out of the blue. Questionable stare from the teen. Like, do you miss talking to Lori? Clyde then cleared his throat and quickly added, Assuming you haven't, uh, that is. Bobby remained silent for a bit, stretching his feelings and searching for the appropriate answer. In some ways, I do. He leaned back on the couch. Honestly, we haven't spoken to each other since the breakup, but I have seen Lori getting heckled like crazy on what she did and her own sisters did. I even saw someone wrote some nasty things on her locker. Clyde winced a little. I feel like I should be there for her, but at the same time, I don't even know what to say to her. A part of me feels like... Bobby pierced his lips. Feels like I might say I might regret or scream at her just remembering how bad Lincoln was hurt. Me and Nene's relationship may not be the best, but I never do something like that to her. She may be tough, but she wouldn't hurt me either, bringing both hands to his head. It just doesn't get me on how she could do something like that to a kid. Well, Clyde again began to hint with uncertainty from his voice. From what Lincoln got from Lynn, it sounded like everyone else was just in the moment. I'm not too sure what it means, but I guess they didn't mean to hurt him. But they still did, Bobby interrupted. They could have stopped it before it got out of hand, right? Clyde raised his hands defensively. I, I don't know. But what I do know is that everyone was just too angry to think. Even when we asked Lucy about it a month ago, she gave a bit off of that impression, though she couldn't say anything much since she started to cry. As she watches Bob, he watches Bobby start thinking about something, he quickly adds, and Lincoln isn't the best person to ask either since he's still figuring out things for himself. The Santiago teen sighed. I guess I'll have to ask her for myself then. Her? Clyde repeated. Lori, she might be doing better now that she's talking to Carol lately. The 11-year-old raised an eyebrow. Who's Carol? Our class president. Bobby scratched his head. Lori had this weird competition with Carol where they've been trying to outdo each other for a while. Lori said that they've been doing at it for years, but I think it started late last year maybe. The teen shrugged. Either way, I kind of figured out it was just Lori being Lori. Carol wasn't that into competing, at least now that the whole student government thing. What did they compete about? Anything, really. 
I wouldn't be surprised if they end up arguing over of who gets the most likes on Snapchat. Bobby started stated half jokingly. Clyde simply raised a brow at this. Was there really a prize for internet likes? It made him think about the video contest the school held a few mo months back. Popularity was on the obvious gang, but if there wasn't any physical reward though, it seemed like kind of pointless in mind. Oh, and before I forget, there's something I really gotta ask. Yeah? Does Lincoln know you guys were working with his sister to help him? I mean, if he learns you guys were trying to dial down his problem, he might come around faster. Or, Clyde frowned, he repositioned himself to face Bobby straight on. His brows knitted together just enough to give him that look that showed how serious he was. He'll still think his closest friends betrayed him and would have gotten away to the very people he fears, and then he won't be able to trust anyone. Bobby raised a brow. That won't happen if he finds out on his own. I mean, you said he was paranoid like crazy, at least. Maybe if you guys tell him the truth, Lincoln might not freak out. Clyde opened his mouth and raised a finger, but no rebuttal came. His lips sealed as he, as he retracted his finger, thinking over the teen's words. Being up front with the loud would be an initial shock to him, but on the hindsight, Bobby did have a point. But there was that still big if, especially with Lincoln, appearing flip towards more of the aggressive stance. How about this? If I talk with Lori, you have to tell Lincoln. Pinky swear, Bobby suggested as he extended his little finger. The McBride huffled, seeing that he couldn't deny the logic thrown at him. However, many of the variables were at play. If something went wrong, Clyde certainly didn't want to be the first to deal with an angry Lincoln. Fine, but if he doesn't want to be my best friend anymore, I'm blaming you. He extended his own little finger, both boys entwining with them briefly before letting go. Bobby's phone gave a loud chirp, making him take out of his pocket to look at his notifications. His eyes widened. It's almost five already. He immediately got off the couch and made a beeline for the door. Sorry, bro. Gotta head to work. Thanks for letting me hang out, though. He yelled out as he exited out of the house. Clyde blinked a few times before he closed the door, grimacing at the fact he st it dawned on him on what he did. Why do I keep making promises that are so hard? He muttered to himself as he got up, shuffling over to the door and locking it. The nerdy kid jolted his head up straight, realizing Lincoln could have heard some of their conversation. He knew the walls in his house weren't necessarily thin, but their voices could have carried down the hall. Clyde had sped down to walk to the guest room, stopping to press an ear to the door. He heard a few springs creaking from beyond the wood, prompting him to gently turn the handle over so slightly to avoid swinging the door open. As the doorway began to creak open, the McBride poked his head and eye into the room, spotting Lincoln laying on his stomach with a pencil in hand. Raising a brow, Lincoln fi Clyde finally opened the door, earning a hitched breath from the loud as he jolted his head up. His right hand suddenly moved to the left, leaving a long bat black streak in its wake. You okay, Lincoln? Yeah. Clyde, Clyde. Lincoln smiled a little. Just got a bit too busy. He chuckled a little as he focused back on his work. His brows knitted together upon noticing the unwanted mark, flipping the pencil over to erase the offending lead. Clyde eyed the pencil of what he found to be a clipboard and some paper. The paper already had a few pictures down and looked as if they were telling a story. Is that a comic? Lincoln nodded, his tongue sticking out a little as he kept erasing as much as I could. I couldn't get the stuff out of my head, so... I feel like I need to do something with it. The African American waltzed over to the bed, leaning in so slightly to get a better view of his friend's drawing. Clyde found it was Lincoln himself sorting for the clothes, what appeared to be, be the clothing store. The loud found himself wearing what Clyde gathered was a hospital gown. In fact, it was the only thing his person that Lincoln didn't appear to be wearing any sort of footwear, that is. His eyes scrolled over to the panels. Clyde then watched as Lincoln slowly pulled out some pants, a shirt, hats and socks, some undies, and a pair of shoes. Squinting an eye. Uh, what are you? Clyde then paused as he went to go after a panel where Lincoln was fully dressed, looking nothing like himself, cautiously watching his surroundings, as if he was looking for someone. He exited out of the store soon after, whipping out a pair of shades and placing them on his eyes after ripping the price tag off. 
raising both brows. Dude, did you just disguise yourself? Lincoln nodded. Turns out that dream is still going on, but now the police know who I am, so I need to stick to the crowds. He ran a few fingers through his white hair, especially with this. He pointed at the snowy cap. I thought sleeping was supposed to clear your head, not give you more ideas to draw. Clyde chuckled a little. Well, but did help sort me some things enough, plus my head isn't aching anymore. Lincoln gave a brief pause as he remembered hearing the front door shut. Who was that at the door? Clyde grew a smirk and folded his arms. Bobby. Lincoln's eyes went wide wide and his mouth fell open slightly. Get out! Really? The African American nodded, only to drop his smirk. Upon Lincoln grabbing his, both his shoulders and shaking violently. Who were you when you were, have you done with, Clyde? Clyde's words became very dizzy from a few moments later after Lincoln released him. After blinking a few times to correct his vision, he found his glasses sat askew from his face, half during his vision being blurred from the near nightstands. Though one eye could have see out, the nerdy kid watched his best friend begin to spaz out while looking around the room. Lincoln fidgeted with very few seconds, as if expected something to jump out and grab him. Am I still asleep? With a dull stare, Lincoln fixed, Clyde fixed his glasses, with one hand reaching out for the other. Pinching Lincoln, his forearm to the point where his nails started to dig in the skin, the loud gave a sharp yelp, immediately bringing the hand to the stinging area once Clyde backed up a bit. The McBride formed a grin as Lincoln started to scowl at him. Are you awake yet? Clyde spoke in a half-mocking tone. Lincoln narrowed his eyes. Okay, if I'm awake. What did you say you and Bobby talked about? Did you talk to him about your thing for Lori? Whatever swagger Clyde had immediately scrapped into a pile of dump into the void. He kind of hated the fact that Lincoln was using that card, but Clyde expected this. After all, he already admitted it, and it was already taking it to that point that it came up frequently between the two. Believe it or not, we did. Clyde threw out the shaking breath. You were right, dude. I can't even compare it to Bobby to get to Lori to notice me. His shoulders drooped a bit as he glanced off to the side. I doubt she actually would want to date someone who is way too young for her. Lincoln pierced his lips a bit, feeling some guilt for convincing Clyde to not go through with that discussion. Well, maybe there is someone in our class that might catch your attention one day. Haven't you been hanging out with Haku since the dance? Yeah, but it doesn't feel like it'd be something more. Plus, she's kind of like Lucy. I mean, she's in love with another vampire. Clyde then shuddered a bit at the thought, and Lincoln couldn't help the chill creeping up his spine as he thought about his spooky sibling. Shifting his attention back to the drawing, So, did you figure out anything else while you were asleep? Lincoln nodded. I'll talk with Luann at some point, and... He tapped the pen with paper with his finger, mulled over to the next part of the plan. If I want to be able to handle my issues alone, I need to learn to get comfortable doing it. Clyde raised an eyebrow, a bit lost of his choice of words. What do you mean? See my dream? Lisa helped me heal over something that I wouldn't do anything to her. It sort of reminded me of how Luann pulled me out of that crowd a couple weeks ago. And now I can't ask you guys, can't ask you guys to protect me forever. Clyde smiled a little. Wouldn't stop us from trying, though. Still after what Lynn told me and those constant dreams I've been having, Lincoln's nose flared a bit as he looked down at his drawing. I know I can't avoid my sisters forever, and it's stupid of me to think that I could. Plus, I can't keep acting like this. He gestured to himself. A coward, I guess. The boy's lips curled down. I haven't seen Lily ever since I left the hospital, and I know she probably misses me the most. So, where are you going with this, buddy? Lincoln looked at his friend with a hollow yet determined stare. I'm going to try and be brave like I am in my dreams. He paused upon remembering his originality planned for a meeting for Lynn, but getting the bus due to Luann's unexpected presence. For real this time, if it means I'm likely going to need to wear brown pants for a while. Clyde then stared at a bit and was still lost. However, the mention of Lily Lee left an open clue for him to latch onto, especially since she can only be at one place. Wait, don't you think this is a bit of a jump? I thought you still want to do things slowly. We did, Clyde, 
and I hardly know anything outside of what I learned recently, especially after three weeks of hiding. Lincoln crossed his legs before doing the same with his arms. Talking with Lynn gave me a lot more to think about than I thought. Some of the kid kinds I was hoping she'd say, though. I mean, part of me had a feeling that they were just mad at me and look and took it too far. But it still seems like I'm not seeing the whole picture like Ms. Lopez told me. He paused for a breath. So if I really want to take care of this, I need to go back where it all started. Clyde carefully listened to Lincoln's words came in, in case if he heard uncertainty in his voice. When he had confirmed he hadn't picked up a hint of nervousness, this made him feel unease. Are you absolutely sure you want to go back home? I mean, there's no telling what can happen to you. Are you even comfortable with seeing more than one sister? You ran when you had the no chance to talk to Lynn for the first time. Not that he was trying to dissuade Lincoln from thinking about it. In fact, Clyde was more certain that his sisters would shower him with apologies and treat him like a king, if it meant making amends. However, this known fact that Lincoln wasn't still yet comfortable with being around more than one sibling, and being at home with all nine of them didn't count for Lily for obvious reasons, would be like sticking your hand in a hornet's nest. The loud nodded, I, I know, and, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I want, I'm ready, I, I have to be. He let his nerves slip for a moment before trying to regain his confidence. This can't go on forever. Clyde gave him a look that basically told him he wasn't so certain. But for whatever reason, his best friend kept him silent. Clearly both of them knew that his plan was probably half-baked at best. But it was Lincoln's interest, so they have to wing it. He can only hope that Lincoln knew what he was doing. Least everyone's progress be dent down the gutter.